It serves you right. <laughs> anyway, I asked him to keep the introduction short. I, my whole name, my whole uh, claim to fame is because of not doing something. I'm famous only because I did not track things across the sky for photography. So you can pretend you never heard of me. Anyway, what are we up to? Do I have to do all those questions? Or do I get to give a talk? All right. How would you like to know how hurricanes work? <laughs> All right, first I have to quiz you. First I have to quiz you. Which is denser? Which is heavier? Wet air or dry air? And I want you to vote on this, and I want you all to vote. How many of you think that wet air is denser? Please put up your hands. All right, you got one other try. <laughs> Water, the molecular weight of water is only 18. The molecular weight of O2 is 32, and N2 is 28. Air is 32 and 28, and water is only 18. It's way in hell lighter, okay? <laughs> now, if wet air was denser, the clouds would be sitting on the floor. You must have noticed. <laughs> Okay, so the clouds are flat on the bottom because the wet and dry air is underneath. All right. Now you need to know something else, and you're not likely to know this. How many calories to melt a gram of ice? I know, you're not expected to know this. It's 81 calories to melt a gram of ice without changing its temperature. Now to bring that gram of water to a boil is another 100 calories. So to melt it and bring it to a boil is 181 calories. Three times that much would be 543 calories. But just evaporating it is 540 calories. All right. So now let's pretend that we have a bunch of wet air over the Gulf of Mexico. What's it going to do? It's going to go up. What's going to happen to it when it goes up? It's going to cool off and drip. <laughs> now, for every gram of water that comes down as rain, 540 calories are left behind in that cloud. And it goes up, and it cools off, and it drips, and it goes up, and it cools off, and it drips, okay? Now, in the meantime, the cloud drifted over North Carolina and dripped 10 inches of water over North Carolina. <laughs> now, you have to think, how much heat do you require to dry off North Carolina of 10 inches of water? <laughs> That's how much heat is left behind in that cloud. That's how much heat is left behind in that cloud. And it goes way up there, and the air coming in from the bottom to replace that co rising column of air blows their houses away. <laughs> I'm not responsible. <laughs> when, when, when I was in North Carolina, they were required to pay taxes on the rain that fell on their roofs. I don't know whether that continues after the roof has blown away. <laughs> Well, anyway, so, but you need to know what to do to prevent the hurricanes. You fill the Gulf of Mexico with ice cubes. <laughs> it's not as though we don't know what to do about it. It's just that it's too hard to do. Well, now what do we want me to talk about? <laughs> I'm interested in cosmology. That's the one. What's that? All right, if you want to do the question for kids, go ahead. So we can see better. 
We made a 24-inch and sleeps three in the two. <laughs> <laughs> I've been in there with two other three people. I'm not making it up. <laughs> no. Carefully. <laughs> Not the lenses, we grind the mirrors. Oh, well that was long ago in the monastery. Uh, making telescopes was not on our curriculum. <laughs> and I used to grind the glass bottle bottles. I had to make them out of five, out of gallon jug bottles. bottles. The early ones, back in the 20s, they're flat on the bottom. You can make it a five and a half inch out of it. So I used to grind those with sand in a, in a pail of water so they wouldn't make so much noise, so it wouldn't get me in trouble. <laughs> I'm going to tell you another one. We're going to lengthen this one. So there were some conversations that went back and forth from Sacramento to San Francisco. That's 100, 100 miles away. And the, the notes went down open. Anybody can read the notes. So a telescope was called a geranium. And if I say I have a 12-inch geranium, that means I have a 12-inch telescope. And if it says that it's potted, it means that it's in a, in a, in a tube and rocker. And if, it's in, if I say that I have a 12-inch in bloom, it's, the mirror has been illuminized. <laughs> anyway, all that information went back and forth open. And nobody knew what the hell is going on. <laughs> with what? Yeah. Well, first I'm going to tell you how we started it. There was this nine-year-old boy, and he was five years too young to join the San Francisco Amateur Astronomers. They won't let him in until he's 14, and he's only nine. And he has a bigger telescope than any telescope in the San Francisco Amateur Astronomers. And he's five years too young to join their club. So his mother called me up and said, please come over. Brucey needs somebody to talk to. So I got a 17-year-old that also had a bigger telescope than theirs. These are ten and a half inch telescope, seven feet long. And uh, so uh, they, they, so I sent him over there so that they could have, so he could have somebody to talk to. And they decided we should have a club and I should be the third member. A nine year old, a 17 year old, and a 53 year old. So then the question is, what will we call it? So the 17 year old came up with a series of titles. One title after another, I said, no, no, no. He said, San Francisco Sidewalk Astronomers. I said, that's what we do. We get the telescopes out of the sidewalk. We'll call ourselves the Sidewalk Astronomers. Anyway, that's what the Sidewalk Astronomers do. And after we made the 24-incher, we ran through the national parks with it, you see. And also with the, with the little one. The little one is an 18-incher. I've slept in that one, too. <laughs> anyway. So we run with the whole flock of telescopes through the national parks. But we give an astronomical slideshow first. So they have some idea of what the hell is going on up there, you see. Well, it's not all up, you know. I'll tell you a trick. When you look into the night sky, try to persuade yourself that you're looking down. Damn it all, you'll see how deep it is. <laughs> If you think it's up, you feel perfectly safe. If you think it's down, it's all gone. <laughs> well, anyway, so in the National Parks, we give a slideshow first so they know. Then I climbed the ladder, the 12-foot ladder on the 